We're here at the USA Science and Engineering Festival and I'm sitting down with Ray Johnson. Ray is the Chief Technology Officer at Lockheed Martin, as well as the co-founder of the festival itself, of which Lockheed Martin is the host sponsor. Now Ray, as an engineer, I oftentimes find myself comparing uh, the success I feel in accomplishing something at my office with the success other people feel in different fields. Uh, I know that's something that you tend to focus on. How can we leverage that feeling of victory to help spur innovation in the future? Everybody understands the sports analogy, the, uh, the thrill of victory and the agony of a defeat and uh, the endorphins that are released when you achieve that goal. And I think uh, if you look at the world today, many of the problems that we face today, I think maybe over the last four decades or so, we've kind of gotten used to it's, it's systems engineering, you know, it's a matter of bringing these solutions together in a special way and we integrate the solutions and then we solve the problems. But if you look at the problems the world faces today, we do not have the fundamental scientific solution to these problems. And so the solutions are going to be evolutionary, but also revolutionary. There are going to be huge breakthroughs that are going to happen when you think about sustainable energy or uh, safe food supplies or drinking water for the population of 9 billion people around the world. These are going to be very tough challenges. It is, in fact, the STEM-educated people of the planet who are going to be responsible for solving these problems. And solving technical problems, you know, whether it's a computer program that you spent a weekend not sleeping, working on, or uh, an electrical engineering problem, wh whatever it is, right, getting the laser to finally laze, there is a thrill that comes from solving those problems. And now when you think about the grand magnitude, the, the huge challenges that we face as a world in solving those problems, that thrill, I think, is going to be unbeatable. More and more every day, there's so many opportunities for things students could do. Are there any fields that you see that are very interesting five to ten years from now that they could start thinking about now? Fields that maybe are emerging where there's opportunity, disciplines that, that you think you you, people ought to consider if they're thinking about engineering. Sure. There's a, uh, there's a neat thing going on right now in, in kind of convergence of technologies. And so I think if you look at actually university departments uh, of the last 50 years or even maybe categories in, in, in companies like Lockheed Martin, we hire people in electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and we think of those stovepipe disciplines within the universities. But today what's happening is we really need to organize around problems and around solutions because the, the problems tend to be interdisciplinary. The solutions to the problems tend to be interdisciplinary. The problems themselves require a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of physics, a little bit of electrical engineering, a little bit of communications to bring those total solutions together. So when I think about uh, the jobs that, that we see coming over the next decade or so, it, 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 they are those interdisciplinary jobs. And so what I think is required is to have a good solid fundamental uh, math education because mathematics helps you model the world, the physical world around it, us. We model that through mathematics. Also to have a basic understanding of physical sciences is very important. Some knowledge of computer science is important because uh, as you know, computer, computers are taking a major role, uh, a more major role in almost every product that we build and almost everything around us has a large uh, component there. But then, going forward, some of the fields, uh, material science. Material mm -hmm. science is going through a huge revolution right now, whether that's nanotechnology, and nanotechnology will end up touching everything around us. Uh, metamaterials, uh, lighter weight, more affordable. 3D manufacturing, that's another area where you think about advanced manufacturing, where you have the opportunity through 3D manufacturing of different kinds of materials, and the material classes are increasing every day to build the first part at the same price as you build the 10,000th part on an assembly line. That will change the world around us and we'll be thinking about when you buy a product, you'll be downloading essentially a digital schematic for that product that you'll plug into your 3D printer and then that 3D printer will create whatever it is for you. Right? So you'll be buying the rights to the design. So these are some of the real interesting, uh, challenging areas. Also in the computer area, we know how important cybersecurity is. So that cybersecurity field of people, for, for kids who have an interest in uh, computers but maybe want it to be a little more interesting, that cybersecurity, um, that, that forensics component of it, protecting computers, that also is a field that will continue to grow. 
I'm sitting with Ray Johnson, the CTO of Lockheed Martin and co-founder of the USA Science and Engineering Festival. Uh, Lockheed Martin is the host sponsor of the festival, and we certainly thank them for all their involvement. You can hear more of what Ray has to say, as well as what all the other engineering celebrities we've had this weekend on engineering.com. <laughs>